we are very worried again about the situation and, and a lot of different elements are playing a role like it is often the case. It's the ongoing conflicts in Somalia, in South Sudan, as well in Sudan. Um, we have climatic uh, disruptions, we have erratic rains, we have no rains in some areas, but as well we have floods, which happened in Kismayo a month ago. There were so strong rains that IDPs who are living in the town had to leave their IDP camp because it was just simply flooded. In Somalia in general, um, the situation is worrying, particularly because of the ongoing conflict. We see places in the pastoral areas where the animals are not able to graze anymore, so there's already stress migration going on. The other context that we are worried about is South Sudan. We have an ongoing quite a high degree of conflict. We are responding to food needs. We have very high malnutrition rates. Again, the phenomena of El Nino might play a role in the country in eastern South Sudan. We have to differentiate between among the different areas. There are regions in South Sudan which are more food secure than others. But particularly Unity, Jongle, Upper Nile states are those states which are very much food insecure because of displacement, but also resident populations who are hosting IDPs, displaced families, or who lost their assets. The ICRC is not in a position and does not want to warn of a famine, of a looming crisis. And the word famine particularly is very delicate. We don't want to play with the word. But, of course, all the elements of displacement, erratic rains, um, the potential of an El Nino are all leading to the worrying situation and the ICRC is very concerned about the future and we're trying to fight against food insecurity. In Somalia we are right now assisting around 33,000 families which is more than 120,000 persons. It's in the north in Seoul and Sanak as well as in the area of Beletwain. We're doing food aid here. In South Sudan we're similarly doing food aid in a very broad and wide action which covers more than 25,000 families. It is a logistical nightmare to do food aid in, so in South Sudan. We have to fly, we have to airdrop the food, we have immense logistical efforts to deliver food to the population. But what we see is that with our food aid, which is running since May, we have already seen some improvement within certain areas concerning food security. We have recently geared up the relief food operations, but in these countries we are very much oriented to strengthen resilience and to look at livelihoods and go into production interventions, which means at the end that we are looking at livestock interventions, we are treating animals in order to increase production, we are vaccinating animals, we are looking at agricultural programs, we are looking at irrigation, basically these programs are meant to strengthen resilience.